Hi, I'm Timothy Brusella, and today we're going to do a couple of related rate word problems uh, for my Math 1325 class, my business calculus class. And here's the problem. Paper's wanting to curve up. Let me put some pins there to hold it in place. The volume of a cantaloupe is given by V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's not a mystery. That's just the uh, formula for the volume of a sphere. And I suppose the cantaloupe is spherical shaped. The radius is growing at the rate of 0.4 centimeters per week at a time when the radius is 7.3 centimeters. How fast is the volume changing at that moment? So, remember with uh, related rates, we're differentiating with respect to time. So, maybe before we start analyzing these numbers they've given us, maybe we should go ahead and differentiate this thing with respect to uh, time. Realize our variables are V volume and R radius. And I've written that down here. We're going to differentiate this with respect to time. Remember that little subscript there. When you're differentiating at the, oh, that orange isn't showing very well, is it? We're differentiating with respect to time. If you're differentiating with respect to a variable different from the variables you're differentiating, that's when you're going to, because of the chain rule, you differentiate the outer thing. The derivative of a var uh, variable by itself is just one. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of v with respect to t, which I denote just v prime. I'm saying right there it's in turn I'm differentiating with respect to t. So I'm not going to use the dv dt notation that my math lab uses. I'll just use the v prime notation because it's cleaner on paper. On the right hand side, don't let that pi shock you. Pi is a number. You have a number times r cubed. We know how to differentiate that. You pick the 3 up, you move it down. 3 times 4 thirds. What happens when you take 3 times 4 thirds? 3 times 4 thirds, the 3's are going to cancel and you'll just have a 4 pi r square. But then you need to multiply by the derivative of that inner func that radius function in terms of t, which is r prime. Long story short, to make any time you're differentiating with respect to time, every variable you differentiate, every one that's different from t, you're going to have to stick on the derivative of it, okay, which I'm denoting with the prime notation. Now coming back to the problem, they tell us the radius is growing at a rate of 0.4 centimeters a week. That's a rate of change. They're saying the radius they're giving us this statement here. The radius is growing. So that's their way of saying that R prime, the rate of change of the radius, is a positive 0.4. So at this point, we know that R prime is a positive 0.4. That's going to be one of the things about these word problems. You're going to have to figure out which numbers are rates. And this thing here, that 0.4 centimeters per week, that's a rate. It's saying that the radius is increasing. That's a positive 0.4 at a time when the radius is 7.3. So the regular R value that we're going to plug in is 7.3. So substitute in, there's V prime, 4 pi, R is 7.3, and R prime is a 0.4. Okay, so, by the way, you'll notice the instructions say round to one decimal place. So punching all of that into your calculator, we're going to get mm, 267.9, that's a positive, 267.9, that would be what, cubic centimeters a week? So at that point, the volume of that cantaloupe it's growing because that's positive and it's growing at a rate of 267.9 cubic centimeters per week. So inside this little box here we'd have a 267.9.
And, oh wow, that was a pretty short one. Let's see if I can find a longer one. Hmm, let's see, here's one. I bet you this one will be a little bit longer. This is number, we're looking at number six here now. A campus bookstore has estimated that its profit in dollars from selling X hundred basketball conference championship t-shirts is given by the equation shown below. The demand is currently 700 t-shirts, but euphoria over their championship is subsiding, so the demand is dropping by 100 t-shirts per day. How is the profit changing with respect to time? <clears throat> well, so we're going to be differentiating the uh, function with respect to time. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll start trying to decide what are these numbers, what do we assign them to, okay? Let's go on to, I think I've written down number six here somewhere. No, well, no, I haven't. So, why don't I just keep on using the same sheet of paper? Here's our profit function P equals negative 42x squared plus 585x minus 524. And we're going to differentiate with respect to time. And remember, every variable that's different from time, you're going to have to stick on that prime. So the derivative of p, that's just a p prime, equals the derivative of a negative 42x squared, that's a negative 81x times x prime plus the derivative of 585x, the derivative of 585 times a letter is 585, but then you have to stick on the x prime. And we know that the derivative of that minus 524 is zero. So let's come back now. This problem says, <coughs> let's see, here it is, it says, the demand is currently 700 t-shirts, but euphoria over the championship is subsiding so that demand is dropping by 100 t-shirts per day. That 100 t-shirts per day, that's the rate. So we're, they're giving us an x, and they're giving us an x prime. Remember that x is in terms of 100, ba uh, let's see, for selling x, 100 basketball conference uh, t-shirts. So we're not going to use 700 and uh, 100. It's in terms of hundreds. So the demand is currently 700 t-shirts. So which letter is re just representing the quantity? That would be x. That's not a rate. And instead of setting x equal to 700, we're just going to set it equal to 7. Now x prime, the demand is dropping. That's the demand, that's the rate of change of the demand. It's decreasing, so that's a negative, by 100 t-shirts, so that's what? X prime equals a negative one. So, take a moment and think about that. The demand is 700. X is representing the demand, the number of t-shirts sold, so X is seven. The rate of change of demand, negative 100, negative one, since x is in terms of hundreds. So substitute in. We know that when x equals 7, when x equals 7, x prime is equal to negative 1. So we have p prime equals negative 81 times 7 times negative 1 plus 585 times a negative 1, and patching that into my uh, calculator, I am getting, let's see, negative 81 times 7, so that's a 567 minus a 585 
567 minus 580. <coughs> okay. Let me see. I think I've done something wrong. P prime is a negative. Well, is P prime a negative 81? Why did someone say that? 2 times uh, 42. That should be an 84, shouldn't it? Yeah, that's an 84. Maybe I should need to drink more of my green tea. That should have been an 84. Thanks for pointing that out to me eventually. So, what have we got? We have an... Uh, let's see. 84 times 7. That's a 588. Minus a 585. I'm just getting a positive 3. So even though the demand for the t-shirts is dropping, the, prof the rate of change in, uh, pos uh, the profit is still positive. So coming back over here to number 6. How is the profit changing with respect to time? It looks like it's still increasing at a rate of $3 per day. And the profit, I wonder if the profit is in terms of 100. No, it's just plain old dollars, so $3 a day. And let's see, where is it? Here it is. Here's the problem. We differentiated, got P prime equals, that's where I messed up. It should have been a negative 84. X to the first power times X prime plus 585x prime. We reread the problem and analyzed the numbers they gave us and decided x is 7 and x prime is negative 1. We plugged in and got a very nice final answer of positive 3. Okay, I think I'm going to take a break now, maybe drink some more of my green tea. Bye-bye.